Hello and welcome back to Practical Web Animation. Now that we've gotten most of our styling done, let's move forward and start animating these. But before we do, I want to put a couple more finishing touches on our styles. First of all, there's a little too much space in between these, so I want to bring these buttons a little closer together. But before we do, let's go ahead and fork a new version. We're starting where we left off in the last lesson, but just in case you weren't following along with your own code and you want to start following along now, then the starting pen for this particular lesson will be in your course notes for this lesson. So once you open that up, let's go ahead and click on the fork button to create a new copy of it. And then we can start making changes in our new copy. So again, I want to reduce the space in between. So remember we use the margin right property to put spacing between our list items. And then for our last list item, we're going to get rid of that margin right and we'll explain why in just a moment. But for now, let's set this margin right to a value of four pixels. And now they're a lot closer together. So now I want to center this navigation on the stage. And by default, an unordered list is a block level element. And the easiest way to center a block level element is using margin zero auto. So our unordered list has a class of main nav. So it's this rule right here that we're going to be editing. So we're going to go into that rule and set our margins to zero space auto. Now that's not going to work because since it is a block level element by default, it takes up the full width of the browser or the full width of whatever its container is. So in order to center it using margin zero auto, we first need to give it a width. And I want its width to be determined by the number of items here and the amount of space that those items take up. Well, each of these items, if we go down to our anchor tag rule here, has a width of 140 pixels. And then we have a margin right on each of those list items of four pixels. So we have five buttons here. Five times 140 is going to be 700. So we have 700 pixels plus the spacing in between those. So we have one, two, three, four spaces in between, and each of those takes up four pixels of space. So that's another 16 pixels. So our total width of this unordered list is 716 pixels, which isn't quite going to work yet, but let's go ahead and type it in. We'll do width 716 pixels. Now, the reason that doesn't work, you'll see that it does center things, but the contact us button has been nudged down to the next line. And the reason for that is because the contact us button also has a margin right of four pixels. So it's that fifth margin right that, uh, that makes it wider than 716 pixels. So we could fix it by setting our width to 720, but then it's not perfectly centered because we have four extra pixels of margin over here on the right. So there are a couple of ways we could fix this. We could fix it by setting our margin left and right for each of our buttons to two pixels. That way there would still be four pixels of padding in between and it would stay centered because we would have two extra pixels on the left and on the right. So it would stay centered. Another option is to simply get rid of the margin right for the last list item. And that's the way we're going to handle it in this lesson. Uh, so we don't really need our JavaScript window here. I'm just going to hit the X over here to collapse that because uh, we really only need HTML and CSS for this lesson. So for our list items here, we have our margin right set to four. But then we're going to create a new rule for dot main hyphen nav space li colon last hyphen child. So for the very last list item in this list, we want to set the margin right property to zero. And when we do that, everything works fine. And we can go back down to 716 pixels now. And we see that our contact us button is not breaking down to the next line. And that gets us where we need to be. Now, one thing I do want to do is to space it down a little bit. So it's not so close to the top of the browser window. So instead of margin zero auto, we could do margin 20 pixels space auto that will give it a margin of 20 pixels on the top and on the bottom. And then the auto obviously would center it horizontally. So now let's create our hover effect. So our anchor tag right now, here has a or doesn't have a background color applied to it at all. It's the list item that has the background color. So let's actually grab that background color, cut it 
and then move it down to our anchor tag itself. There we go. So now our anchor tags have that background color. And then we'll create a new rule for the hover effect for those anchor tags. So main hyphen nav space li space a colon hover. So for our hover effect, we're going to set our background color to the same value as the background color for our site, which is 349, if I remember correctly. And let's hover over those buttons. Yeah, there we go. So when we hover over the buttons, the background just disappears. Now, in order to make this a little more eye catching, we're going to add a subtle little fade here. We're going to fade it out instead of just making it disappear. And when we're going to fade an item, we need to, to first of all, determine which rule we need to apply this transition property to. We're not going to apply it to the hover rule. We're going to apply it to the initial or the original rule for the anchor tags inside that main nav. So for that original rule, we're going to set our transition property equal to all so that any property we decide to animate will go ahead and animate. And we're going to make it last half a second. So 0.5 S and then a semicolon to end. So now when we hover over each of these buttons, we have a nice little subtle fade out. And that makes it a lot more interesting than when it just suddenly disappears. And I like the way that looks. And you can play around with that number a little bit. If you want it to go quicker, you could bring it down to 0.25 seconds or something like that. If you want it to take longer, you can bring it up to one or two seconds. Um, but that's our first initial fading animation. Let's go ahead and tweak this a little bit so that we're fading two different things at the same time. So let's save that and use that as a starting point for our next fork. Uh, so you, since you've been following along like a good student, um, you've already typed in all of this code for yourself. So go ahead and save uh, your version of this pen and go ahead and fork a new version. So we're creating a fork off of our original fork. And, uh, and there we go. So now what I want to do is I want to take away the background color altogether and put a border around it. So let's go into our anchor tag here. And first of all, let's get rid of the background color for actually, you know what, let's leave that alone for now. We'll worry about that in a second. So for our original anchor tag rule here, we're going to get rid of our background color. We're just going to get rid of that altogether. And instead of having a background color, we're going to have a border. So we're going to set our border to one pixel solid white. And you'll notice that, uh, that everything breaks again. Our contact us button jumps down to the next line. And the reason for that is whenever you add a border to an item that already has a defined width, that border is going to make that item larger. So our width here is set to 140 pixels, but then we have one pixel of border on the left and one pixel of border on the right. So the full width of each of these is now 142 pixels. So that's the default behavior. Now there is a property called box sizing that allows us to change that default behavior. If we change box sizing to border box, then the final width of our item will be whatever we define for it. So if we define a width of 140 pixels and then add borders to it, those borders will show up inside the item and the final width of the item will still be 140 pixels. So I'm going to set everything uh, to a box sizing value of border hyphen box. And when we do that, you'll see that it automatically gets fixed. And now what I want to do is when we hover over these anchor tags, I want the border or I'm sorry, I want the border to stay the same. I'm not going to mess with the border at all. I want the background color to change to white and I want the text to change to blue. So we're going to leave our transition property alone here. And instead of setting our background color now to the color of our background of our body background, we're going to set it to a value of white. So now when we hover over the background color goes to white and now we just want to change the color of the text as well. So we're going to set the, the uh, color property to a value of three, four, nine, which is the same blue as our background. So now when we hover over those, it basically just inverts itself. So the text, which was white is now the same blue as the background and the background, which was blue has changed to white. So let's save our pens and we'll move on with the next lesson. Thank you for watching.